name is Guy, I'm a program manager in Excel. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, hi. And uh, thank you. And I'm really excited to be here. I mean, it's, it's an amazing city, right? It's uh, my first time in Bulgaria and my first time in Sofia. I wish I had more time to spend in the city and just walk around and see all the all the cool stuff that your city ha has to offer. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to be here. And uh, besides, besides of me being excited uh, uh, because I'm in Sofia, I'm also excited because I work in Excel. And, uh, and I'm also excited because I'm going to tell you about all cool stuff that we are working on or delivered during the last, uh, during the last years. And so you may ask like why I'm so excited being in Excel. And I mean, the first answer is pretty obvious, right? Excel is the mostly used software in the world, as you may know. Uh, like we have about one of five adults today working in Excel in the world. The, I mean the number is, 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 is just amazing, right? And there are even three Excel world championships, real world championships with winners and all people around the world are participating in these uh, championships. And I'm, I'm not aware of any other product which does championships like this, right? So it's pretty cool. Uh, in addition, like Excel is almost in every industry and, and, uh, and uh, in every place and everything. Apologies, just a second, I'll switch the presenters here. Yeah, and, uh, 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 and last but not least, uh, also another small anecdote that I wanted to tell you about Excel, is that country of Denmark even doing like census, uh, census questions about Excel, right? So this is really cool. But why does it matter to you why Excel is so important? for users, for users like you and the work that you're doing on the daily base. Uh, and uh, the answer for this, the answer why Excel is so important uh, and uh, crucial today more than ever is because the world of data is rapidly changing, right? Uh, like, did you know that 90% of data collected in the world was collected just in the last two years? So the world of data is growing uh, rapidly and Gartner predicts that 50% of companies, uh, large companies, are going to depend on data analysis and proprietary analytics for their competitiveness. Just imagine, 50% of large companies will require proprietary analytics and data analysis. And th the number is huge. Uh, so we know that the, that the data is expanding quick, and we know that uh, the need for data analysis is expanding. But the problem is that our brain and our skills do not expand at the same rate. And so the question is how we will fill this gap, right? And the answer that, that I have is pretty obvious. Excel does it by introducing tools that democratize the access to the world of data analytics. In other words, uh, we make the world of data analysis and data analytics in Excel easily accessible to the masses, right? And uh, Excel has been doing this for years, and Excel evolved rapidly during the last couple of years. We introduced a lot of tools, a lot of cool tools that allow you as end users to do a bunch of stuff, from importing data, analyzing the data by yourself, uh, doing new stunning visualizations. You can work on Excel, uh, on almost any device, including Mac and your mobile phones, right? You can collaborate with others and share your workbook and work simultaneously with other users on the same workbook at the same time, which is exciting. But today I want to speak about something else. I will speak about the new era. The era when uh, having great productivity tools is not enough anymore, right? Your productivity tools today need to be much smarter much more personalized and much more connected. And what do you mean? So what do, what do I mean? As we move forward, we believe that artificial intelligence and machine learning will take a huge role uh, in today's world and will really change how the world works today, right? I mean, even today you have 
self-driving cars, and the number of self-driving cars is, is expanding, is growing, is just growing greatly, right? Uh, you have uh, smart assistance on your mobile device, whether it's Siri or Cortana uh, or Google Now, which tells you when you when you need to leave the work in order to avoid traffic and arrive on time, and things like that. Uh, so today I will speak how we, in the Excel team, are beginning to evolve the product to meet the changes uh, of the modern intelligence world. So I will go, you, I will take you like pillar by pillar, smarter personal and connected, and connect it, and we'll show you the cool features that we are doing in each area. Uh, so let's start with the first one, which is about smarter. Uh, and first of all, I would like to speak about the new data types. So as you may know, uh, everything in Excel is literally a text or a number, right? There are errors and everything. But besides, uh, all the cell values are either uh, numbers or text. And with this feature, which we call new data types, or rich data types, or compound data types, you will, have, you will hear all, uh, all uh, uh, a bunch of different names. We are really changing how Excel works today and how Excel treats the data. So imagine that instead of having Microsoft here as a text, this cell will actually contain an object, will actually contain an entity that represents the entire company of Microsoft. And it will have properties like the CEO of a company, the number uh, of workers in the company, the market value of the company, and so on. Uh, think of it as an object, right? For those of you who are programmers, you're probably familiar with object-oriented program, uh, programming. So think of it as, as a particular cell on grid contain, just contains an object. If you're not a programmer, think of it that you can take a row in your table, condense it into one cell, and this particular cell will contain a whole row of data for you. And I'll show you how it works. Let me switch over here. Yeah, so I have some uh, company names here, and let's say that I would like another company. Let's call it Snap. And Excel is smart enough to understand, hey, this is actually companies that we are talking about, and it offers me to convert these companies uh, into stock names. And so it works with the web, it works with the Bing, right, to enrich the data on the grid. And I can go and click on a company name and see different and see all bunch of data for this particular company. Some of the data is not available. It happens, right? It's also a demo. But uh, you can see the opening price of, the, of this company and, and the high and low and so on and so forth. And I can go and, for example, type a ticker. A ticker in the next cell. And Excel is smart enough to understand, hey, this is actually an entity which is called Microsoft, and I'm extracting the ticker name of, of, of this company, right? And I can uh, add more values, like, for example, price. and the high or low. And Excel is smart enough to understand that this row contains the list of objects while each object represents a company. And so if I type another company, for example, Starbucks, we will let Excel work for a second, and it will be converted into uh, an entity as well with all the relevant values in the adjusted columns, right? Uh, let's take a look at the city. So I have another cell uh, with the name of city of Orlando and Denver. I will just add another city to this list, which is called Seattle, right? Se Seattle, like this. Yeah, yeah. I'm keeping you awake, guys. 
And again, Excel is smart enough to understand, hey, this, is, this column actually contains the list of cities, and so I can click, and Excel will convert these values into a city for me, and then I can click on a certain city and see all the cool information about the city, right, like around the Seattle. Uh, let's see what are the properties for this, uh, uh, for this entity. So I can see the name of a mayor, things like that, right? It's nice. Uh, and, and another cool stuff is, is that I can reference and work with these objects just I work with any other grid data. So for example, I can type uh, B4 dot, and I can see, B4 is a Microsoft, right? And I can see all the properties of this object. And so for example, I can uh, extract uh, uh, the market value and divide it by, let's say, uh, H6, which is Seattle, uh, dot population, uh, so, uh, yeah, we kind of uh, can give almost one uh, million of dollars to every uh, person in Seattle, which is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, so this calculation is kind of meaningless, but I will be glad to hear about, <laughs> about your scenarios and about the cool stuff that you can do with this. But again, uh, we're just starting, we're just scratching the surface, right? It's just the very first prototype of this functionality, which is called new data types. And we believe it will literally change the world you work with data in the grid. Uh, and also, again, a couple of things that I mentioned, but I would like to emphasize it again. Uh, Excel in this scenario leverages the power of connectivity and the power of web and the power of Bing uh, in this specific scenario to enrich the data about companies and about cities and imagine that we will expand these data enrichment capabilities even further and you will be able to connect to, to corporate data and enrich uh, the data in your workbook with data coming from, coming from your corporate sources, uh, which is cool. More is coming, so stay tuned. Uh, yeah, we ju I just showed the demo of the new data types. By the way, if you have questions, please feel free to stop me and I will, and I will answer them, or at least I will try. So yeah, any questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Um, one question about the uh, properties of the objects. You can, yeah. of course, set your own custom ones, I'm guessing, because the ones you, you showed uh, in the preview. Uh, ideally, I mean, this specific demo, we created the properties for you. Uh, ideally, we'll have some kind of extensibility mechanism. I mean, let's take, let's take it offline. Uh, it all depends on what our customers really need, right? So if I'll be able to understand your scenarios and, uh, and understand your needs, uh, I hope we'll be able to, de to, to develop the right solution for this. Right? Okay, but but today, it's the list of constant properties, and this is what you, what you will see in the first version of the product. Thank right. you. Any other questions, guys and girls? Yeah? Hi, Hank. Where? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you made it like an Excel function. Does it mean that every time I change something, it will be recalculated? It depends on the nature of your data. So, for example, the sticker will probably not be recalculated, yeah. right? Because it doesn't make any sense to recalculate this, the, 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 the ticker, the symbol of the company. But other data, like price and things like that, will probably need to be fetched from the Internet every single time you access this property, yeah. All, all the time you're working is... Yeah, so it's, it's again, it depends. It depends on the nature of your data. Let's continue. I have a big list of demos. So the next thing that I want you to, 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 to talk with you about is the modern Get and Transform Data Experience. And this is something that I'm really proud to speak about because I'm the program manager responsible for this functionality. And so if you need to blame someone, blame me. Right, so today if you go to... How many of you are familiar with Power Query, by the way? Power Query, Get and Transform, whatever. Okay, like about. Yeah, I know that you're familiar. <laughs> and can you, and he's not familiar. Okay, <laughs> so about like uh, I, I saw a couple of hands. Uh, so I'll tell you. I'll uh, I'll walk you briefly through the history of Get and Transform in, in Excel. Uh, so a couple of years ago, uh, we developed a dedicated a gene to Excel called Power Query Gene, which was available for Excel 2010 and Excel 2013. 
and uh, uh, this Power Query engine offers you a great set of tools to import your data uh, from different sources, uh, transform it and clean it in different ways by simply clicking on, on commands on the ribbon, right, instead of writing your own formulas, and also combine and mesh up data from different sources. Uh, we realize that this functionality is great, right, and much superior compared to the legacy get data functionality that's, that's your that exists in Excel. And so we, we decided to turn this get, this Power Query uh, uh, functionality, this Power Query set of functions uh, to power the data import and shaping scenarios in Excel. It took us a couple of years, but starting from March this year, all the uh, data import and shaping scenarios in Excel are powered by Power Query technology. And I will show you shortly how it works and and what it allows to do and and what it allows you to do. So I will switch to presenters view again. I will go to my uh, demo workbook, right? So hey, uh, this is uh, <laughs> just a second. Hide presenters view. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so this is get and transform, right? I can connect to a variety of sources, whether uh, whether I want to connect and import data from files or from a bunch of uh, databases, uh, Azure sources, and so on and so forth. Uh, in my example, I just imported the list of states uh, uh, from Wikipedia. I'll skip the step because it's, it's kind of time consuming. But I just went uh, to uh, to the From Web Wizard, and they pasted the URL from Wikipedia, which contains the list of states in the United States, and selected the table. I'll skip the step. Uh, and uh, at the end, I have uh, I have a query created for me, right? Query that contains the relevant data for me that I just imported from the web. Uh, okay. And let's say that I would like to analyze this data because, I mean, today anything can happen. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. I don't know what exactly will happen with the states in the United States uh, uh, next morning. So, yeah, let's say that I would like to perform some analysis on this data. Uh, and so doing analysis is kind of tricky, right? You need to know the algorithm. You need to know the pattern to apply on your data before analyzing it. But the features that I want to show you uh, I mean, it almost works like magic. It's called columns by examples. So imagine that instead of thinking of an algorithm and then applying it, you just type the final results, and Excel guesses what you want to do and applies the right transformations for you. So I have a couple of columns here with a state name and state abbreviation, the capital city, and, and when this state was established. Uh, I can do some simple transformations, for example, Alabama. If you can't see, by the way, tell me. I think that there's a slight problem with the, uh, with the resolution. I hope that you still see something. Uh, so, yeah, you, you can see that Excel is smart enough to understand that what I actually want to do is just to capitalize every single state name in my data, right? And I can even take a look at the formula that Excel creates for me behind the scenes. So it just says, hey, make this text, right, ca ca coming from this column, take it and, and turn it into an uppercase, right? And so this is just a simple transformation that I can do. Yeah. But I can do more cool stuff. For example, I can select this column, and this column, as you can see, it's actually a text column, right? It contains the text. But internally, when I look at the data, this is a date that is stored in this column. And so I can go and just type December, for example, De December. Yeah, and Excel is smart enough to understand, hey, I actually want to extract the month's name from the date column, right? So this is one thing that I can do. And I can extract the year in the same manner. Or I can even extract, I can even go and type something like Tuesday, 
I know that, that, that this particular day is a Tuesday, and so Excel is smart enough to understand, hey, what I actually want to extract is a week of day coming from this date column, right? And this is magic. Uh, and uh, don't close your eyes, by the way, because the interesting part is coming. Or I can do something like this, Alabama, AL, whose capital is Montgomery, was founded on Tuesday in December 1819. And uh, just go and make a slight correction here because Excel thinks, hey, AL, AK, it's a state abbreviation, right? So it tries to concatenate the state abbreviation, but I just type what I want to achieve and uh, click OK. And I mean, it's a magic, right? So think of it, instead of, instead of thinking of an algorithm, and algorithm can be complex, I just go and type the final results, and Excel does all the magic for me. And this is cool. So yeah, uh, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, Brianna, I'm okay with time, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so we talked about the smart pillar, and let's talk about the personalized pillar. Give me a second, yeah. Uh, so you all know custom functions, right? Custom functions exist in Excel for a while. It, uh, it gives you the ability to create your own functions that implement some uh, custom logic, some custom calculation, or bring your own additional data uh, into the grid, and then you can use these functions like you use any other function in Excel, like VLOOKUP or whatever. Uh, and today, uh, we add the ability to do the same with JavaScript functions. right? So instead of going and using VBA, you can use a, prog um, a modern programming language in JavaScript using modern programming tools like Visual Studio, uh, which is way more convenient to work in, and you have all the debugger tools and all the relevant developer, uh, modern developer tools, right? And so you can create your own logics with JavaScript functions and then call them from Excel, and these functions will work for you on any platform, whether you're working from Macintosh, whether you're working from browser, uh, PC, iPad, uh, whatever. Since I'm running a better version of the product of Excel on my own machine, I couldn't make it work, but I will show you a short movie how you can use this custom functionality, how you can use custom JavaScript functions and what they actually allow you to do. So imagine that you have some, uh, some mobile uh, sales, uh, mobile phone sales data here, right? So uh, these are my mobile phones that I'm selling, and these are just some brands for comparison from, from, uh, uh, from my competitors. And let's say that I would like to extract the price of the uh, competitive model, competitive mobile phone mo uh, model. And so doing it in Excel can be somewhat complicated because I need to call some external web service which will parse the data and put it into the grid, so it requires a certain knowledge and can sometimes be complicated. And uh, luckily, I have someone uh, from uh, f in my organization who developed this functionality in JavaScript. And so I can just type the function name. Just a second, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, yeah, and I'll explain what just happened here. So you can see that I'm calling a custom function which is called Contosa Get Phone Price. It works with IntelliSense, right, with, with uh, automatic completion, like you do with any function uh, today. And you saw uh, uh, get data, right, getting data uh, in every cell just for a second. And this is due to the fact that, that these functions work asynchronously and asynchronously bring you the data from the web for each of the phones. If I'll skip forward, I'll show, I can show you how uh, this code looks in Visual Studio. I won't walk you through all the 
for all the stuff that is written here. But yeah, it's just a JavaScript, and I can write and debug it and develop it uh, with, uh, with Visual Studio, and then connect these uh, custom functions to Excel and call them directly from Excel. And this is the way we uh, allow you to customize your logic, to customize the things that you're doing in Excel by calling custom JavaScript functions, uh, which implement proprietary logic in for your company, right, and for your needs. Uh, we work through the demo. Let's move to the next pillar, which is uh, uh, which is called connected. Uh, and this is kind of cool. This is going to change the way you analyze the data today, right? Uh, the feature that I want you to to tell you about is called automatic insights. And uh, in this feature, we leverage the power uh, of the cloud and the power connectivity to the web uh, to do more intelligent stuff for you, right? Uh, automatic insights, or just insights, is our name for automatic generation of intelligence, intelligent patterns, like finding trends, uh, or outliers or correlations in Excel without, uh, without you needing to be an expert in data mining or whatever. Think of it as, uh, as some kind of data mining that happens behind the scenes. Excel just takes your data, sends, I sends it to some mining process on the cloud and returns the results to you, results that you can then uh, use and work in using classic Excel tools like pivot charts and pivot tables. And again, I'll show you how it works. Presenter view. Here we go. I have the again some sales data for my company, mobile sa mobile phone sales data, and I can just click on insights. And while I speak, the data is being sent to the cloud to some proprietary uh, analysis service. We generate some interesting things for you, right? And some of the things that are being offered for you are pretty obvious, like I can see the number of units growing over years, things like that. Uh, I can see the number of units by generation, by country. Let me click on show all and show more interesting insights. Yeah, number of units by country and generation and so on and so forth. Yeah, what about this one? Oh yeah, it's an interesting insight actually. It says, hey, the operating system, Lightway, again, it's just imaginary oper mobile operating system, right? Accounts for the majority of units in the United States. So it automatically finds trends uh, and, uh, and outliers and some interesting insights for you without you having to do this analysis by yourself. Uh, let me find another thing that I want you to show you. Yeah, okay, this one. For country USA, the number of units is increasing over time. Great. Let's insert this data uh, into, the ch into the grid. I just click on insert chart and the data came into my grid in the form of a, of a regular pivot table. And I can continue working with this pivot table the way uh, I do today with pivot tables and pivot charts and, and other uh, Excel analysis tools that you, are, that you use on your daily base. Uh, so let's say that I would like to add uh, legends and uh, yeah, and I would like to format it this way. And let's say, hey, uh, I would like to do the breakdown by operating system. Maybe there is something interesting here, so I can just go. Uh, I just go and and uh, grab OS into the legends, right? And in, and now I can actually see that, that hey, the majority. Okay, the units, the number of units in the United States is increasing, but the majority of the growth comes from one operating uh, system, which is called Lightware. Right, and so I can start with an automatic insights provided, uh, provided to me by this intelligent service, and then I can use this work as a starting point for my proprietary analysis and additional things that I would like to explore. And again, because this is a service, this insight thing is, is a service, we learn over time and we try over time to provide better and better analytics for you. So the next time you will use it, we'll 
adjust the, the suggestions that we are providing for you to give you even more precise and more relevant user results to your needs. Uh, not at first stage. Ideally, maybe. Yeah. Collaboration in Excel, another thing. By the way, questions? I feel that I'm talking too much, yeah. Uh. Oh, that can help, thank you. Um, I actually have two questions. The first is because you introduced a very good enhancement with JavaScript. But do you consider, for example, Python as an additional? Uh, we have it. Uh, I'll speak shortly about it. Uh, so we are checking this. Uh, yes, uh, continue voting on Excel user voice uh, for this idea. Uh, it helps us to prioritize our resources. This is the best answer that I can give you at this stage. Perfect, thank you. That's quite yeah. enough. For those now. of you who are not familiar with Excel, you how many of you are familiar with Excel user voice, by the way? Excel user voice. Yeah, just a couple of people. Okay, I will speak about it shortly. Uh, so I, yeah, I have one more question. Absolutely. It's related to these new flavors that we have in the system. So, for example, how they change the how do they change the hardware requirements for running the uh, Excel? Uh, so basically, you can see all the system requirements uh, and hardware requirements uh, on the web, right? Uh, we keep in mind that some of the people will continue working on lower end device, and we make our best to ensure that the addition, the things that we are adding, will not imp impact your performance and will not require from you to upgrade to stronger devices. Some of the functionality may require this, like data model, things like that, but the majority of stuff that I just showed to you, it doesn't require from you to do, to up to, to do an upgrade, okay? Yeah. Uh, collaboration, yeah. One more question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much for sharing uh, all of this interesting information. Uh, my question is related to um, to um, the insights and yeah. personalized information. Uh, a lot of our companies are working with uh, very confidential information, proprietary and confidential. And um, how do you plan to address your enterprise customers' concerns about the security of their information? Uh, yeah, so I can assure you that, that we take the security and the confidentiality of data very seriously. Uh, Microsoft complies with a bunch of industry standards like I can show you this, this, this slide. It's a huge list of industry security standards uh, that ensure that your data is kept private and confidential. For inside services, we don't store anything from your data on the service. Uh, we store some metadata, that, but, but nothing that is related to your data. Like you can uh, share credit cards and, and, uh, and credit card numbers and the names of your, uh, of your customers and everything. None of this will be saved on the server whatsoever, even not in logs, right? Nothing of this is saved on the web. Uh, I mean, we in Microsoft store our personal confidential data on the cloud, right? So we have a full trust in the cloud and uh, and uh, in the security that the cloud provides this is the best answer that i can give you thank you so my understanding is that uh, this service works by uh, uploading uh, this data to your service doing yeah. the analysis and then completely removing uh, this data it's it's not even stored there so nothing is there is nothing to remove okay thank you right we just d we just use the data to do the analysis send the results back to you nothing is stored whatsoever on the okay. service I have another question. This yeah. is related to um, the personalized functions which you yeah, absolutely. Uh, told us about. So, uh, for what I understand, the trend is to, uh, uh, to s begin using uh, uh, JavaScript rather than VBA. Does this mean that you plan on completely retiring uh, the use of VBA? Uh, VBA will continue to exist. We don't have plans to retire it. Uh, I can't tell you at this stage what will be the roadmap of of uh, JavaScript uh, uh, when you compare it to VBA. But at this moment, both of the functionality will, will uh, exist and will continue to evolve. Thank you very much. Great. Let me continue. How many of you, by the way, tried to share a workbook uh, with your co-workers co in the company and saw uh, this nice dialogue, which you can see up here? Please raise your hands. 
Yeah, nice, nice. I can see more hands raising. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, we know it sucks. Excuse my French. Uh, so we finally addressed this uh, this uh, ugly thing, okay. And uh, you can share your workbook with your with your coworkers and work on the same workbook without seeing this nice dialogue up there, right? Okay. Uh, and it actually works on any device. I can share my workbook with uh, any one of you, and you can open fr from your mobile devices or, or from your uh, PC. Mac is coming soon. And work on the, sa on the same data, on the same sheets. The data is being merged for you behind the scenes automatically. And uh, every person who works on the same workbook will eventually see the most updated data, even if it's being updated by someone else, right? So we merge and send the updates to everyone. I'll show you shortly how it works. Uh, today it's supported only if you upload your data to SharePoint online or uh, or to OneDrive, right? Uh, so yeah, you'll need again to share your workbook on the cloud. So I hope it will work. I'll show you a short collaboration demo. And again, I will... Yeah. Let me switch to to this. Okay, this is actually my mobile phone, right? It's right here, and uh, uh, yeah, I can. Let's say that I'm driving to work in the morning, and I'm looking at some report, and I see some interesting data. That that. Sorry, what is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm driving. <laughs> sorry, I'm in a train. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Right. I mean, you should never uh, do anything with your mobile phone while driving. Okay. Let's start with this. I'm stuck in a traffic jam. I'm standing on the side of the road. Yeah. So yeah, I see. I I just uh, uh, opened the 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 report that was sent to me you know, yesterday and then browsing through the date and they see some interesting figures that I would like to analyze and look again at while, while uh, I'll be in the office. So I just go and let's say I highlight this figure in an orange color, right? Cool. And so once I arrive to the office, let me switch an account quickly. Yeah, once I arrive to the office, I decide to go and open the same report on my desktop. Let's wait for a couple of seconds until this report is being opened. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So first of all, you can see one great thing that just happened. I'm s I still have this report opened on my mobile device, right? And at the same time, I can open it on my desktop as well. And you just saw the cell being updated from yellow to an orange color, right? So uh, the update was received from my mobile device and sent to all other clients, in this case, to my desktop, right? Uh, so no file lock, right? I can continue working on my report simultaneously and change the data and everything. Uh, let's say that I send this report to someone else, to another person in my organization, and so I will just go and open it, hopefully. Yeah. Hmm, something happened. Yeah, it's always like this in demos. Something doesn't work for you. Give it a second. Cool. I will just start editing in browser. Right. And so you can see that I have this workbook open simultaneously 
from several devices, from different platforms, right? I have this opened in my mobile phone. Uh, the same user, Emily Brown, oh, sorry, it's not Emily Brown, this one is Megan Brown, yeah, this, here I can see, hey, it's Megan Brown who, is who has opened this workbook from the desktop, and another user, in this case, Emily Brown, it's another user, right, opened the same report and start editing uh, in browser, and uh, you can see that while I'm here, Emily Brown browse through the sh through the uh, sheet, I can see that that uh, that here on the desktop, I have a notification which says where the uh, where the other users are. Right, I can go here in the collaboration corner and click on it and see, hey, Emily Brown is editing the same worksheet, and I can even go to the cell where that user is doing his or her changes, or I can even start a chat with that user. And if, for example, that user on the browser starts editing a cell, you can see that it's being reflected on the desktop, right? This cell becomes highlighted, so I know that someone else is editing the same data together with me, and so I can start, I can go, for example, and, and change something. And give it a second for the data to be synchronized and updated. So first of all, I have the chart here updated, and you see that the data was synced with my desktop client, and the, cha and the chart was updated as well, the grid data was updated as well. Uh, so yeah, it's a great uh, way to collaborate. So you can work much faster, right, and much more efficiently. You can finally collaborate on the same workbook. Uh, I'd appreciate some applause. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we talked about collaboration. Last but not least, I would, li I would like to speak about our passionate community. I mean, about you guys, right? So, uh, Excel user voice. I saw that only a couple of people are familiar here with, uh, with this great thing, which is called Excel user voice. It's actually a portal where you can go and vote for a feature of your choice. So if you have something in mind, if you, m if you miss an important feature which you would like to use right, in your daily work, I strongly encourage you to go to this portal, Excel User Voice, create an idea of your own, or just browse through ideas uh, that we are created by other users and vote for them. And we in Microsoft take it really seriously, right? Uh, we... Uh, we analyze and we look almost at every idea, or at least at the most popular ideas being published on Excel User Voice, and we try and really work hard to address them. And so we did a bunch of improvements, all came from, from you guys, right? From, from the customers like you. Uh, we did a bunch of updates almost on every platform, including online and Macintosh and desktop and mobile and so on. So if you have an idea, just go and vote for it, create an idea of your own. And I can assure you that we will look into this. Uh, right, another slide uh, with uh, several important resources that you can use. First of all, Excel community. Uh, it's a new community, but the number of customers is constantly growing. You can engage in discussions with, uh, with other people, without, with, uh, with other Excel experts and regular Excel users. Uh, you can help others to solve their problems. Uh, great portal to, elaborate, to, to collaborate with others. What's new? Always stay up to date uh, with, with the most recent uh, updates and new features that we constantly develop. Uh, feedback, help, support, training, blog. You have all the relevant links here which I encourage you to walk through. Uh, by the way, I brought you a couple of uh, stickers, Excel stickers like this one, right? Like the one that I have on my laptop. You can grab them from, from the entrance here, I believe. And also there is a small card with some of the links that you can see here. So you will have it like in, in the touch of your hands uh, and you will be able to stay, to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we are developing. Uh, I encourage you uh, to join the Microsoft Insiders pro program. Most of the stuff that I showed you, or actually some of the stuff that I showed you is available for insiders, right? Uh, once you join the insiders program, you have an access to earlier bits, to earlier, function to earlier functionality 
that we develop and you can provide feedback and, and try this functionality and tell us, hey, this is missing for me, this works well for me, this doesn't work well for me. So we really encourage you to join the, the Insiders program and give us some feedback on the features that we develop. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all. <laughs>